Hi, hello. If you don't know me, my name is Kat and welcome to the coziest corner of the internet. Today I am back with part two of cozy games that'll make you cry for Nintendo Switch. You guys absolutely loved the first installment of this video, so I thought I'd come back with a few more games that I found recently that are both cozy but also emotional. Not much of an intro today, but I hope you guys enjoy the 10 games I've recommended and without further ado, let's get to the list. First on the list is one that I recently got on sale on Nintendo Switch, it's The First Tree. From the creator of Home is Where One Starts comes The First Tree, a third person exploration game centered around two parallel stories, a fox trying to find her missing family and a young couple dealing with the tragedy of theirs. Players take control of the fox on a poignant and beautiful journey that crescendos at the source of life and perhaps results in the understanding of death. Along the way, players can uncover artifacts and stories from the young couple's life as they too become intertwined in the fox's journey towards the first tree. I think that description pretty much gives you the reason exactly why this is first on the list. I'm not very far into the game, but I'm already on the verge of crying. It's truly an art piece, and with a beautiful storyline, I can't recommend it enough. This next one on the list is one I'm hoping to play soon as a let's play on the channel. It's Gone Home. You arrive home after a year abroad. You expect your family to greet you, but the house is empty. Something's not right. Where is everyone? And what's happened here? Unravel the mystery for yourself in Gone Home, a story exploration game from the Fulbright Company. Gone Home is an interactive exploration simulator. Interrogate every detail of a seemingly normal house to discover the story of the people who live there. Open any drawer and door. Pick up the objects and examine them to discover clues. And cover the events of one family's lives by investigating what they've left behind. I feel like this game is going to be very similar to What Remains of Edith Finch, so I'm really looking forward to playing through it. This next game had a lot of hype around it and it's very much deserved. It's Ori and the Blind Forest. The forest of Nibel is dying. After a powerful storm sets a series of devastating events in motion, an unlikely hero must journey to find his courage and confront a dark nemesis to save his home. Ori in the Blind Forest tells the tale of a young orphan destined for heroics through a visually stunning action platformer. Featuring hand-painted artwork, meticulously animated character performance, and a fully orchestrated score, Ori in the Blind Forest explores a deeply emotional story about love and sacrifice, and the hope that exists in us all. There are actually quite a few platformers on the list today, which usually isn't something I lean towards because I have useless reflexes, but this game might have sold me on the genre. It just feels very relaxing and I can't wait to play it all the way through. A game that I've been recommended countless times, this next game is Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. A man clinging to his life, his two sons desperate to cure their ailing father, are left with but one option. They must set out upon a journey to find and bring back the water of life as they come to rely on one another to survive. One must be strong where the other is weak. Brave where the other is fearless, they must be brothers. Control both brothers at once as you experience co-op play in single player mode, like never before. Solve puzzles, explore the varied locations, and fight boss battles, controlling one brother with each thumbstick. This is one journey you will never forget. I am really excited to play this one through because it sounds very, very unique, but also sounds just like the kind of narrative-driven game that I adore. Another platformer on the list, and one that people just rave about, it's Gree. Gree is a hopeful young girl lost in her own world, dealing with a painful experience in her life. Her journey through sorrow is manifested in her dress, which grants new abilities to better navigate faded reality. As the story unfolds, Gree will grow emotionally and see her world in a different way, revealing new paths to explore using her new abilities. The game is a serene and evocative experience, free of danger, frustration, or death. Players will explore a meticulously designed world brought to life with delicate art, detailed animation, and an elegant original score. Through the game's light puzzles, platforming sequences, and optional skill-based challenges will reveal themselves as more of Gree's world becomes accessible. The art style of this game is insanely gorgeous, and I know both cozy gamers and all gamers alike absolutely swear by this one. Next one on the list is one that is both spooky and cute. It's Inside. Hunted and alone, a boy finds himself drawn into the center of a dark project. Try Play Dead's award-winning indie adventure game, Inside is a dark, narrative-driven platformer combining intense action with challenging puzzles. It has been critically acclaimed for its moody art style, ambient soundtrack, and unsettling atmosphere. I've been recommended this one many times over, and though I'm kind of a chicken when it comes to horror games, I think this is one that I'll make an exception for. I've seen both my partner and many friends play through this game, and the puzzles are both very intriguing and very difficult, but also just add to a very strange and mystical story. 
by the end, I feel like I didn't really know what was going on anymore, but it just really had me hooked from the very beginning. This next game might be arguably the hardest one on the list. It's Celeste. Help Madeline survive her inner demons on her journey to the top of Celeste Mountain in this super tight handcrafted platformer from the creators of multiplayer classic Towerfall. The controls are simple and accessible, simply jump, air dash, and climb, but with layers of expressive depth to master, where every death is a lesson. Lightning fast respawns keep you climbing as you uncover the mysteries of the mountain and brave its many perils. If you like a challenge but still want to play a game that has a very emotional and relatable storyline, this is the perfect one for you. One of the most heartfelt stories I've ever seen in a platformer, and it's a must play. The thing I do like about Celeste is it is accessible in the way that if you're not very used to platformers like myself, you don't have to do some of the more challenging platformer aspects. But if you really do like a challenge, there is like endless gameplay. It's a really just expansive game and you can continue playing it forever. I've heard this next one heralded as one of the best indie games ever. It's Thomas Was Alone. Thomas was alone and then, well, he wasn't. Thomas Was Alone is an indie minimalist 2D platformer about friendship and jumping and floating and anti-gravity. Guide a group of rectangles through a series of obstacles using their different skills together to get to the end of each environment. Thomas Was Alone tells the story of the world's first sentient AIs and how they work together to, well, not escape. Escape is a strong word. Emerge might be better. Emerge has an air of importance to it, while keeping the myriad plot twists and superhero origin stories you'll discover under wraps. We didn't even mention the bouncing. That'd be overkill. This game is both a minimalist puzzle game, but also an incredible showcase in the power of simplistic storytelling. I think you could tell from the description I just read out how also humorous the team that made this game is, and just how great the storytelling must be. Another game that's been sitting in my backlog for way too long, it's Stillness of the Wind. One by one, everyone left the once bustling village for the city. Everyone, except Talma. Now approaching the end of her days, she maintains a simple, solitary way of life, surviving, subsisting, tending to her homestead and her goats. Develop your own personal routine as you care for your farm and your animals. Tend to your goats, make cheese with their milk, collect eggs and cook meals grow vegetables and barter with a traveling merchant who brings increasingly disturbing letters from your family in the city. A follow-up to the critically acclaimed Where the Goats Are, The Stillness of the Wind is a quiet rumination on life and loss. This game looks absolutely gorgeous and like something I could just play all weekend in bed. It sounds very calming, but with a melancholy that I just adore in games. The last one on the list is one that's been in my backlog for, yes, way too long, just like the stillness of the wind. It's Oxenfree. Oxenfree's supernatural thriller about a group of friends who unwittingly open a ghostly rift. Play as Alex, a bright, rebellious teenager who brings her new strep brother, Jonas, to an overnight party on an old military island. The night takes a terrifying turn when you unwittingly open a ghostly gate spawned from the island's cryptic past. How you deal with these events, your peers, and the ominous creature you've unleashed is up to you. You determine every aspect of Alex's story while exploring Edward's Island, uncovering the base's dark past, and changing the course of your friends' lives. I've watched a few friends play a little bit of this game, and I just think the voice acting is incredible and the art style is beautiful. My plan is actually to play this game on my very first ever YouTube stream on May 17th at 6 p.m. British summer time. So if you're available and want to come hang out and see what decisions I make for Alex and their friends, please do join me. There's a link in the description to set a reminder for the day. Anyways, that's it for me today. I hope you guys found a few games that you like or some new ones to maybe get. Let me know in the comments what games did I miss and which were your favorites from this list. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd be really, really grateful if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell to hear of new content. It really helps me grow here on YouTube and expand our little cozy community. And if you'd like to hang out, maybe play some games together, I stream over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash cozygamercat. Feel free to come in and say hi and let me know you came from YouTube. And if you'd like to see what I'm up to during the week or see some of my game reviews and cozy flat lays, I post over on Instagram at cozygamercat. Anyways, thank you all again, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you have the coziest day, and I'll see you next time.